You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Hello, Systematic Geekology friends. Welcome to another edition of Systematic Geekology Drive-In. It's a new season. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Have a penitent Advent wherever you are in the season. We hope you're having a warm and merry one. And uh, we're excited. Um, uh, My friend Joe and I did a preview of this edition of Systematic Ecology Drive-In, where we preview the movies we're going to cover this Christmas. And and today, we have what some would consider the top of the best Christmas movies of all time. We're starting off with a banger, and it's A Christmas Story, 1983 A Christmas Story. And um, I absolutely, I'm just not going to bury the lead, I absolutely love this movie. I saw this in the theaters when I was 11 years old in 1983. Uh, And from there on out, like older elementary into middle school, every year from there on out, like my friends would quote and watch this movie and laugh about it and and have fun with it. And and I'm glad I was able to even pass it on to my own kids. And so that tradition where it's on like the TBS, TNT channels on Christmas Day, they just run it on a loop for like – 28 24 hours or 48 hours whenever they get started and and we just we leave it on all day um christmas day in my house and love it that much so uh we're excited to do this one joe uh what was your experience with this movie what's your hot take where does it fall in your christmas tradition of um of movies so it's funny i i've never i'm only just within the last Honestly, year. I think we're probably only realistically going on year two of me actually like enjoying Christmas, you know, yeah. because reoriented, mm-hmm. redefined the whole nine yards. It's a, that's a whole, it's a whole thing. But growing up, that was like peak. Uh, no, like cr- Christmas is not really like a thing. So like to say that one of these movies pierced that for me And became Mm. like an institutionalized part of any assemblance of a Christian or or Christmas tradition that I had speaks volumes to to the significance of the movie. This is Mm -hmm. for me, you know, there's other there's other there's a short list, right? There's a there's a handful of Christmas movies that I really do dig. um, But starting right out i won't bury the lead either we're start i am one of those people that puts it mm-hmm. right at the top of the list um as as the seminal christmas movie you know what i mean yeah mm-hmm. yeah and and yeah this movie's set in the 1940s so i i just remember going to see it with my maybe my mom took me or maybe she saw it another time or i just remember her even enjoying it yeah she dropped me off at star wars movies yeah she dropped me off the movies with my friends like we didn't watch a lot of movies together as as a family but but i remember her just connecting with this because it's set kind of her time frame but it crossed generations because you have like brother and brother dynamic friend dynamic bullies uh the christmas nostalgia and traditions and what you want and long for in your toys and then are you going to get it or not do your parents approve or not all those things you wrestle with just at like pre-adolescence and trying to find yourself in this world mixed with like this nostalgia uh and of christmas and the traditions that go around it and whether it's going to work out this year or not everybody looks forward to something they what you want to do and sometimes there's surprises along the way sometimes you know uh, a dog uh rips up your christmas dinner and you have to go out to eat and and you're you think your christmas tradition is ruined that year because of something that has changed but no you find a different one a different kind of warmth and and bond with those things i just think this movie has everything going for it it's it's edgy for little kids because they're like oh did he cuss? Did he not cuss? Uh, he said fudge. He said the F word. Was it really fudge? Was it, what did he say? So um, it, it just has all, the full package for me in terms of um, all, all those things, whether it's a tradition of putting up a tree or gifts you, or you don't expect to get, or maybe you do expect to get, or that, that one family member who gives you a, a gift that's really lame, but your parents think it's important or cool. I, I like all that stuff is just wrapped up in in this uh, incredible movie, but with with like the adolescence and the and the narration of the older person looking back on their life, narrating right. it just sets that tone all the way through. Yeah. So uh, so I'll tell you a story. In college, there was a group of us that um, 
we kind of opened up we opened up our doors and and said anybody who um doesn't have a place to go um mm-hmm. come have a meal with us come hang out you know whatever and <laughs> we made it a habit because so many of us grew up on this movie that we made it a, a habit of going out for chinese food at, at nice. like, as as dinner every every year we did that um yeah so <laughs> I, I i love the fact that you brought up the tbs thing because that's where i I am that generation that like mm-hmm. that they started doing it the 24 hour loop. It would start at eight o'clock on Christmas Eve night mm-hmm. and then roll straight through for 24 hours till <laughs> eight o'clock on Christmas. Um, yeah. And, and many, many a time it was, it was watched as, as it would cycle through, but yeah, it's, it's one of those, it's one of those movies that you, you, can pass along to the next generation, right? It's one of right, those. Man. And and I think it's because, you know, you watch it now and you can tell this is a movie about the forties that was made in the eighties. Like the, you, you can, you can tell. And yeah, <laughs> but there's so much, I guess, coming of ageness to it as a kid that it just, I think there's a, there's a lot that kids can see, of themselves in the movie. So I think a movie like that just begs to be a generational classic. You know what I mean? Yeah. One, 100%. And, um, yeah, I, again, like I just, this movie is nostalgic for me because I remember seeing it in theaters, but also just my friends quoting it. There's just so many quotes, so many yep. things that just are iconic with this, this movie that, that you can read. So, so for you, is there a scene is there a quote that stands out that like when it's on TBS, you're watching you're like, okay, here it comes. Everyone settle down. Here it comes. Here's my favorite part. I'm going to watch right now. <laughs> um, so, so quotable lines every time as kids, if any one of us would say the word smart ass, you could just, <laughs> you could hear it in your head as that kid from, from uh Christmas story. Um, yeah. You know, you, you'll shoot your eye out. That's that's one of those, especially growing up uh, in in a in a part of the world where I, back back then gun culture wasn't. It was just the culture. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. It, for for kids to have a BB gun or something like that was like not it it was kind of a given more or less. Mm-hmm. So so seeing a kid really wanting a, a Red Rider BB gun and you know hearing oh you're gonna shoot your eye out and all that like that's another one of those things that like yeah that <laughs> that's um but yeah so those those are some of my some of my favorite quotable lines but there's a scene in it where Ralphie's daydreaming and he's coming into his parents' house and he's blind from mm. soap poisoning. <laughs> and both of the parents are just over themselves because they've poisoned their child. And it's all this kid's fantasy, larger than life sort of thing. H- <laughs> hilarious. Like, yes. gets me every single time. And, of course, the uh, the scene with Ralphie sitting uh, or t- standing at the bottom of the steps in the bunny jumper mm-hmm. and, and the dad just goes he looks like a pink monstrosity <laughs> <laughs> right right <laughs> phenomenal yeah and and there was that like go try it on the mom saying like oh oh your aunt usually gives you the best gifts here go try it on go try it on i i had that as a kid my mom i would get some like clothes and what kid like oh my gosh i got clothes for christmas really you know and my mom would always make me go try it on i'm like no there's more presents open i can do it later go try it on go try it on see if it fits and i'm like yeah they spent time and looking back on it as a as a parent now, I was like, they spent time thinking about these things, buying these things. They want to make sure it all works out. So go try it on. I want to make sure this works out. If I have to take it back or not. Uh, but as a kid, I hated it. But now I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Go go try it on. I want to make sure that this is is working out. Um, yeah, I I think for me the um, you know, it is like 
my family background, like it's definitely the forties, like the, the dad is the one at work and the mom's the homemaker. And you have these kind of binaries the mom's the nurturer, the dad's the provider, and he's trying to fix things, but it doesn't really work out is, is he a good dad or not, but he's there for his family. He's trying to provide, you know, so, so I think those kind of dynamics were, were somewhat part of my family growing up. Um, and, and so like this play of like, what's going to happen for Christmas? Who's creating Christmas? Who's, who's going to put up the lights? Who's going to put up the tree, that dynamic and tension there. But, but when like Ralphie, no, his family's not giving him any kind of indication that he's going to get this gift that he really, really wants this BB gun. He, he's going to go to Santa and, and he's at the mall and he's in line. And I just love that whole play of this anticipation of he's going to sit on Santa's lap and Santa's going to understand. But while he's in line, he's in front of this or behind this dude who has these goggles on or whatever. And he's like, and every time like the wizard of Oz witch walks by, he's, he's like, I like witches. I like Santa. <laughs> I, like, I just love that kid so much. Like that's my, one of my favorite, like little subtle moments. And then he makes his way up to Santa and they're going to close. And even Santa's like, kid, you know, shoot your out. And he's the most awful Santa of all time. The elf is like super creepy and, and awful. And the cinematography of him watching up and the elf like in his face, it's just brilliantly uh, shot. And then he gets pushed down the, uh, the slide. And his parents come by just to pick him up. Like they left him alone in the line in the mall. You never do that now. But, and he's just laying there in this like cotton fake snow depressed. Uh, just that whole play from the beginning to the end is, is one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie that I have to watch every time it gets me it gets me every time that's hilarious yeah I I'm so thankful especially watching movies like this that my family was not one that's like let's go out and get like Christmas pictures and all of that kind of stuff because like (laughs) I'm not gonna lie to you man the idea of taking my child and sending him on the lap of a complete and total stranger dressed up like anything. I don't care. It's not about, (laughs) it's not about the holiday. It's, it's, it's the entire concept is fascinating to me that people are like, let's do this. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. what? Yeah. 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 It's, it's a, it's a strange tradition. Uh, and you know, but, but there's a part of like the magic of Christmas that there is like the whole Santa thing and, and what do you, the gift giving and, and the build up to it and whether it's going to happen or not is, is still all there. Yeah. And we, we still try to create that within our family. My kids are in college, but we still have this kind of anticipation and, and try to make it surprising. And, and we lean in to hold the whole St. Nicholas that there, there is like literally a Christian saint, uh, uh, St. Nicholas who, who defended the poor. And we even have a prayer of, of St. Nicholas that we pray, um, every Christmas Eve as a family, where it is like we pray for uh, the children, the poor, the doubters, those tossed by the tempest of the sea, because St. Nicholas is the, the patron saint to, to sailors as well, uh, travelers um, that you just kind of lean into, which is, you know, Santa's traveling to every single house. That makes sense. Um, that that's a part of the going, going deeper, but, but yeah, there's just a family dynamic, that kind of thing. And, and other kids, I, I think the friendship there, the quote for me that like, really stood out is the the triple dog dare yeah. you know like the the build up like I, my 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 friend group were we're not pranksters and we didn't like push each we push we didn't push each other too hard but but yeah that whole like build up of the the dare the dog dare the double dog the the triple dog dare that eventually the dudes left out in the snow and no one wanting to rat out and they look out <laughs> into the, out the window and he's still out there wailing his arms around the, the police and firemen have to come is is pretty awesome pretty awesome yeah 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 there's so many there's so many movies or so many moments in this movie that are just that's part of why i've yet to so as of the time of the of of recording this i have not gone to go watch the sequel that came out on right, uh, right. hbo I think it mm-hmm. is. It's HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Because like these these delayed sequels that that I've most of them that that I've seen done just haven't really been very good. They haven't right. like actually captured the essence. And so for me, I don't think the movie needs a sequel. I think the movie right. is a well done story in and of itself. You don't need anything else attached to it. Yeah, like even my kids came home for for Thanksgiving and and after, 
Yeah, like they came home and then we started talking about Christmas prep. When are we going to do what? When are they coming home from exams? When when are we going to grab our tree? You know, they're not in the house anymore. So we got to think through their college schedule and when they're going to get home. Kind of different dynamic for us. But then I was like, hey, we watched the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. And I was like, hey, there is a um, a Christmas story sequel on HBO. Do you guys want to go down that road? Do you want to watch it? I'm kind of curious. And my own kids were like, uh, is it going to make a Christmas story like any better like we love that movie so much we don't want anything to taint how we see the the original movie please yeah, yeah i don't they, they were very hilarious so i'm gonna have to watch on my own just to kind of see what it's about if i could pass it on to the family and say this is worth watching all together as, as a family but yeah it's out there and i don't know if um yeah I'm, I'm curious for our listeners that are out there if you've watched it uh get back to us should we should we not what's your take does it complement this movie? Does it make this movie better? Is it just, you know, there are two separate things? I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see an older Ralphie and see what he looks like and what he's up to and if there's narration. But but yeah, I I liked um, you know, nine nine year old um Ralphie and and I have a brother, a younger brother named Randy, who was a picky eater and had to drag everywhere as well when I was a kid. That's funny. So 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 now that and and now my brother's like a chef and and like cooks <laughs> and is a lot bigger than me, taller than me. So it's it's uh it's pretty funny that that had that connection there with the movie. That is funny. So I've actually been to um the house I I used to live oh. in uh I used to live in Cleveland for a spell and this, this whole deal is like this whole, the, the movie is a very big deal in the Midwest sure. um, between Ohio, Minnesota, a little bit of a spell in Chicago. I've been a little bit everywhere in the Midwest and it is, it's, it's funny how much that is like an institutional piece because it does show midwestern life like pretty well you know what i mean like that that yeah. pretty much is life for midwesterners you know yeah and i didn't i i heard somewhere that you can actually stay in that um house on christmas day like, like it's a two-year waiting list or something but i think it's like an an airbnb or or, or like a um you know, one of these places you can rent out and go and, and have the experience. I, I think that's the case. I overheard that. Um, but yeah, it's a place you can go and visit and see the actual house and perhaps even stay in it. But but it's a it's very expensive and you have a long, a long, long wait or waiting list to get into this thing. But that's yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind and of I, like this it's kind of like the Scream House like that. There's a couple of locations yeah. from famous movies that have they ever since Airbnbs and stuff like that became a thing. They've they've really you there's been a huge uptick in these kinds of destination spots where for a couple days out of the year they open it up to guests and all of that kind of stuff. Um mm -hmm. I heard the same thing that you can that you can stay in there. Um but fascinating that that, that that's become a thing. <laughs> no, it is. It's funny. Um, but and and for me, like the whole snow wintry thing, I grew up on the beaches of, of North Carolina. So I did we got maybe a, a half a snow day or a little bit of a snow every other year or, or something. But in terms right. of you and you growing up in the snow, I, I like there's almost, you know, a nostalgia thing for having a white Christmas and having snow on Christmas and it's romanticized and sentimental and that kind of stuff for you. How does this come out of play? When you see snow, you're like, oh, this is awesome. It's bringing back me. Or are you like, oh my gosh, um, please, please, no more. S snow, snow and white, white Christmas, that's romanticized by exactly two groups of people, right? Ready? Mm -hmm. People who don't live in snow and lunatics. One of the, <laughs> it's one of the two of them. <laughs> um, it, so, yeah, there is something to, you know, the first time the white stuff falls and it's pretty. And then for 30 seconds, you say that it's pretty. And as a kid, you you appreciate it a lot more because generally the extent is maybe you have to shovel it, but mostly it's about playing in it and you don't have mm -hmm. to do this thing called driving it. And yeah. so it's a lot more mm -hmm. magical mm -hmm. when you're a kid. So I, I do understand as a kid the nostalgia tie of like snow days and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, f for me, it's more about seeing it through the lens of Midwesterners because it's wild. I remember the first time I may have told the story on the show. I've told it before, but um, I've remember the first time that I heard that a, a storm was coming. 
and they mm-hmm. they were shutting they were shutting down the cooperative space that that we were in and for the day, early for the weekend it was friday all this stuff and i'm like ah it's a little snow i'm i'm from the northeast so we are a bit of a snow globe so i i'm not <laughs> I, I, i'm not unused to you know winter conditions and all of that kind of stuff i got home at 4 bro 445 there was like a foot of snow on the ground it was mm. insanity like i've never seen snow come that fa- fast and furious before so like to wake up and to see everything just caked white like yeah. that yeah mm-hmm. i could see a kid growing up like that you know what i mean for yeah. us in northeast it's a little bit more like ice not quite as 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 heavy of snowfall in all of that but yeah yeah. And and I, I like that this this movie that came out in the 80s, it, it has some edginess to it, too. Like you said, like yeah. the weather's washing your mouth out with soap, but the, the fudge, saying the words, getting your friend in trouble because you say you learned that you learned that word from your friend and, and, and you hear the, the smack of the kid in the background. But but yeah, we get we got to talk about the lamp. Yeah, you got to talk about the lamp like there. There it is like the prized possession of this dad. He earned it as an award like uh, and putting it out. And the mom's like, oh, my gosh. And the neighbor's looking at it like it. It, it is amazing that how far this movie has come. It was a funny moment, um, somewhat edgy moment in the movie. And then now, like in terms of all that we have in terms of like nostalgia and pop culture making it into the onto the shelves that now you can actually buy this actual lamp that if you really wanted to, to buy it you could buy it and you could find it on amazon and get it to you and have it up by christmas yeah yeah so so is now the point where i say that we have that lamp <laughs> yes all right you have it yes that is a good reveal yeah that is a good reveal yes i love that yeah that uh so we, when we were building out our our ornaments and all of that, we were um, both both my wife and I have have started a new chapter as far as how we how we view Christmas and all of that. Mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. we went out a couple of years ago and purposefully picked out a handful of ornaments to start our tree together and all of that. Mm-hmm. First one I pick up is the lamp. Yes, <laughs> and that extent. And then that extended out to uh, to decorations. So we have a uh, I don't know, probably about four foot tall uh, Jack Skellington in a, in a Christmas mm-hmm. hat, yeah. and we have uh, the the lamp. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I don't think I have any uh, a Christmas story memorabilia or ornaments or things like that, but it, but it's out there, and and it's definitely a movie that runs on on repeat throughout throughout the day uh but that's that's classic man i i i love that um yeah and then you know i think one of the enduring nature of this movie it has this comedic moments you have this kind of tension of is he going to get the gift is he not going to get the gift what what is going on uh does anybody notice him you know you you got the bullies you got the cussing you got the snow you got the lights the crucifixion but you you have this dad that looks pretty disengaged um and and does what dads do in the 40s or whatever um but but they are the end of the christmas opening of gifts and that whole morning he leans over to ralphie and he's like oh isn't there one more gift back there yeah. and unbeknownst to the to the whole family he got the kid what he really what he really goes i don't know maybe and then the mom's like when did we get that and he's like i don't know maybe santa got it and i just i just loved that play and then he eventually gets the toy that he really, really wanted, but we learned is it's not really a toy. Like it, like it, the whole movie, you're going to shoot your eye out, and he's had this built-up fantasy. He's going to defend his house against robbers, and he's going to use it. First time he uses it, um, it, it 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 doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. An icicle fell in his eye. You know, yep. broke his glasses. <laughs> yep. It's so funny that that like they kept it slice of life enough that it wasn't a matter of you know, we're going to, you know, it's all going to work out in the end and there's not going to be any problems whatsoever. And all of that, like, nope, it, it, he, he got the gift and then an icicle fell in his eye and he, you know, (laughs) almost shot his eye out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I just think there, it's a movie. It has all, all its, all its tropes and all those things, but I think it's just masterful storytelling as you follow them along, whether it's the narration the flashbacks, the daydreaming, the build up to the end, 
uh, the the tension and, and the dynamics of the family and friends and bullies. For me, it's just it's there's not much wrong with it, and 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 builds all the way to the end where they have this kind of moment together as a family eating dinner together uh, under the warmth of 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 kind of Christmas. And and yeah, we're we're um, a people of faith um, Christian podcast who would love to lean in to keep Christ in Christmas. Okay, y'all, let's, mm. let's do that. <laughs> um, let's, let's make sure we're intentional about that. The season of Advent is, is challenging. It tells you to slow down and, and reflect on what our true longings are, what we truly hope for in, in life. Um, and, and, but, and this movie has no really uh, like overtly kind of religious themes to it. It doesn't acknowledge like the nativity scene, but, but all those things are revolve around kind of gifts and family and friends and, and and what matters most as as you're growing up and trying to discover who you are in the world and, and live in this kind of crazy comedic world we live in, uh, it's all there. All the ingredients are there. Yeah, I I think one of the things that you can point to pretty pretty categorically as far as what what does make what makes this movie so special when it doesn't really have a lot of the same kind of hallmark things. As a matter of fact, if you look at it realistically, it has some of the very concepts and things that people who are anti-materialistic, people mm. like myself, like that mm-hmm. we should hate this movie. Like this should be like capitalism 101, don't like it, all of that kind of stuff. Like you said, keep keep Christ in Christmas. So why does a movie like this get the pass? I think mm. because it's not about the gift. It's about the magic of the holiday as a kid Mm -hmm, you know what i mean mm -hmm. and whether or not you had that and reminisce on that or if you didn't have that and you lived vicariously through the people on the screen i think either way it's that it's that putting the magic into the holiday and and the kid the whimsical kid experience that can happen is part of what makes this movie as special as it is. Yeah, well said. Well said. Yeah, I think I I, I can't anything add anything more to that than than yeah. It, it gives a pass because of what's there and underneath it. And and yeah, wherever you are in your faith or traditions or or whether what what you do with Christmas, we we acknowledge that Christmas can be a very warm and and jolly and festive time for folks, but it can also be very hard and stressful and. Um, anxiety ridden because of uh, in terms of whether it's family or life or loss or grief that the expectations the weight of expectations of what you're trying to create can overwhelm what the meaning what the true meaning of the season is all about and so if you have to make it simpler if you have to boil it down if you if you have to just be honest with your family and friends to say you know what i'm gonna do less for christmas this time um, because that is what i need it's really about the friendship the family the lean into what makes it magical and and that kind of the light of hope you know if we're going to bring a new light light into the world how are we shining our light in the midst of of all that is heavy and and dark in this world so um yeah yeah and and then what gifts are we sharing what are we're, how are we what's contagious in our lives when it comes to that so awesome awesome yeah i i, I think that it's this movie feels like this is an opportunity to to let people know that if if this is something that you as a Christian, like as, as a Christian, it is cool to watch these kinds of movies. Like it's cool. It's Mm -hmm. cool to, 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 to be cool with some of the things that, that are, are talked about and, and allow for, allow for it to just be an enjoyable experience, even if it's not Christocentric and, and you know, it's still okay to like Christmas stuff. That's not Christocentric. Yeah. And yeah, the rest of our movies we're going to talk about are the same way. You know, there's not really kind of Christocentric uh, themes in there. Uh, we're not doing Charlie Brown Christmas. You know, we uh, we, we pick the four just because it, it lends into there. Of course, there's a lot of other extra movies we can bring in, Christocentric ones or others, whether it's Christmas Vacation or others. But, you know, there's only four weeks in Advent that lead up to Christmas. So uh, these are the ones we do and there'll be other Christmases. But but yeah, we thought we'd start off with the bang, uh, one of the one, the best ones out there that that we love and, and, and go from there. Um, so, so yeah, we, um, yeah. So we'll, if there's anything else you want to share, we'll kind of wrap this up, head to, yeah. head to the landing. All right. So we did in our last, um, you know, our preview, we talked about 
fake tree, real tree, and we kind of revealed ours. Um, and we'll ask those questions to other hosts when they're on other uh, the other movies. But but yeah, so I'll ask Joe this this other question: um, lights on the outside of your house or just on the inside on your tree? Do you do lights outside on your house? Uh yeah, we do. We have a, a porch that we put lights up on. Nice. Nice. Our our family, my dad was kind of minimalist when it came to bless his heart, you know, just in terms of the exertion of what he tried to do. Just getting a tree up uh, was was all that Bill Rose could do. But the um, so we didn't really have lights outside of our house. And we were kind of on a back street on the beach that none of people ride down. So it made no sense. We didn't have a lot of traffic on our street. Um, but but we would ride around and look at other houses that put those lights up. And our families become we're at the end of the street, too, but it's, it's kind of dark where we are. Um, so I've, I've put, I've wrapped lights around kind of our roof, um, every, every Christmas to put them out. And it is kind of nice to have that glow. We leave it up way, I, even after, even in like deep January, um, we have those lights still up because it's like, man, it just looks cool. We got the fat, uh, traditional lights, uh, colored lights on, <laughs> on our roof. And it just kind of lights down, down the street from a mile away as you're driving up, you see it. So that's, that's what we are. Um, that's funny. Yeah, so thanks for listening, friends. We hope that uh, your holiday is kicked off on a on a good start and good start for your for your holy days uh, leading up to Christmas. And um, yeah, we love this movie. Um, let us know what you think about the movie, whether it's on social media or or on our website. Um, other movies that that you like that that bring out the holiday spirit for you and uh, we'd love to hear from you and again um thanks we're glad that you can pull up and get out uh, your goodies and gifts for another edition of uh drive-in and we'll see you next time at the movies This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.